Baptist Church for our Wednesday online service. This is April 1st, 2020, and we thank you for tuning in and being with us. This evening, if you have your Bible, I would like for you to turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 146. Psalm 146. I'm going to read that psalm. It's 10 verses. And so if you follow along, Psalm 146 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever, which exalteth, executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners, the Lord openeth the eyes of the blind, the Lord raiseth them that are bowed down, the Lord loveth the righteous, the Lord preserveth the strangers, he relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day of life, the opportunity to serve you. Thank you for the inspired, infallible, preserved word of God. Thank you for the words that we have already read. Help it to be an encouragement to our hearts, and let's look to you, dear God, for everything. Dear Lord, asking you to forgive us of our sins, and dear Lord, that you would turn us back to you, even in a time like this, in the fear that's going on around the world, in the coronavirus time, dear Lord, that we would remember it and that we would turn back to you, and that, dear God, you can turn this over for good, for simply turning your people back to you and for saving a lost soul. Please bless us during this time, in Jesus' name, amen. In this portion of scripture of Psalm 146, I want to draw your attention once again in verse 1, where the Bible says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. So two times in that one verse, the psalmist says, Praise the Lord. In verse 2, the Bible says, While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. So twice again, the psalmist says he will praise the Lord or praise God. And then in verse 10, the psalm ends up or concludes by again saying, The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. Uh, can we praise God in difficult times? Now, we're in difficult times now. I believe the psalmist was probably going through difficult times. Most of the psalms were written uh, just uh, out of the heart of somebody that was going through something very difficult in their life, and it was uh, praising God. I know that there are psalms of praise and uh, psalms of prayer to God and so forth, but uh, we, we can praise God in difficult times. We should praise God in difficult times. And I think that we could ramp that up and say we better praise God in difficult times. The Psalms speak personally to the child of God, especially during difficult times like we're in right now in this coronavirus scare and uh, epidemic that's rightfully infecting the whole world. And so in this difficult time that we are in and you find yourself in, I want to speak this evening from this Psalm on the title, Praise God anyway. Praise God anyway. Uh, I'm going to give you three words just for three thoughts that are in this portion of Scripture of how you and I can praise God anyway or how we ought to just praise God anyway. First, the word is help. The first word that we're going to look at is help. Uh, we need some help. Would you agree that we need some help? I say that. I, I say we need some help. I, I think the world has come to the conclusion that in this epidemic, we need some help. And I think anybody would take some help that was given to them. They wouldn't turn it down. We need some help. In verse 3, the Bible says this, Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, 
in whom there is no help. In verse 3, there is no help in man. Uh, absolutely, whether in a very powerful position as a prince that is mentioned there, people of power, people of position, people of prestige, there is no help in this current epidemic that we're going in, or in the average individual on the street is what he's talking about, the son of man or the common man. It means that there is just simply no help in any man in whom there is no help. It didn't say that there was some help. It says there is no help in the sense in you, that you and I think about in this epidemic, in this coronavirus that's going all around the world. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. Not a little help. There is absolutely no help. We need some help. We need some help outside of what man can do. Man has already demonstrated that he can't do anything except shut the world down. Get into your houses, close the doors, you're allowed to take a walk if you want, you can walk the dog, you can go get some groceries, you can go to the doctor if you uh, are, need some uh, care, but don't even ask for a coronavirus test. We need some help. The answer that they've got is close everything down except the essentials. We need some divine help. Uh, we need God. That's the conclusion, he says. Since there is no help in man who is just like us, made of the same stuff that we're made of, we need some help. Our help cometh from the Lord. That's what the psalmist is trying to get you to see. That's what God's trying to get us to see. That we need some help, and we need some help from God. Psalm 20 and verse 2, the Bible says, Send thee help from the sanctuary, and strengthen thee out of Zion. We need some help out of the sanctuary or sanctuary from heaven. We need some help out of church. I don't think that we need to close church. We need church. We need help out of church. I understand about not getting anybody sick, but we need some churches to stand for God and to stand for good and to stand for the Bible. And we need some help out of the sanctuary. Psalm 22, 11, the Bible says, Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. This is the cry of the individual. We need some help. Verse 19 of the same chapter, Be not far from me, O Lord. O my strength, haste thee to help me. The psalmist is saying he's humbled himself to the point that he's saying, I need help, I need help from God. Maybe the high and the haughty don't need some help. I need some help. People I know need some help. People in the nursing home need some help. People in the hospitals need some help. People on the street need some help. We need some help. It's not going to come from man. The Bible says in Psalm thirty-three twenty, Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. The psalmist in Psalm 38, 22 says, Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Please, God, we're pleading, uh, help us quickly before we perish. We need some help. Praise God anyway. Uh, we need some help. I'm not ashamed to admit it. There's nothing that man can do about it. You turn on the TV and they're just as confused as, uh, as we are. We need some help. Help comes from God. Psalm 40, verse 17, the Bible says, But I am poor and needy. Would you come to that place in your life this evening? Just say, I am poor and needy. Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tearing, O my God. I need help. Do you need help? Our help comes from God. And we can praise God anyway because our help comes from God. In the midst of this situation, in the midst of this epidemic, worldwide epidemic, we can praise God anyway because our help comes from God. Let me give you another word. In verse 5 of our text of Psalm 146, the Bible says, Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Number two, I want to say hope. I said praise God anyway because we have help and our help is in God. 
Number two, we praise God anyway because we do have hope. We're not without hope. We've got Bible hope. We've got hope in God. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We have hope in God. This is real hope. Uh, this isn't uh, imaginary hope. This is not made up hope. This is not a uh, fake hope. Uh, this is better hope than a, a coronavirus check from the government. This is hope that's hope in God. Verse 5, the Bible says, Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. This is real hope. This is true hope. This is hope that you can count on. This is hope that you can bank on. This is hope that comes from God. This is hope that's not in the bank, but it's in heaven's bank. It's in the account of heaven. It's uh, treasures laid up in heaven. It's salvation in Christ alone. There is a place reserved in heaven for you. Rust, moth, they cannot corrupt. Thieves cannot break in and steal and take away. This is hope in God. Why is Christ our true hope? From verse 5, verse 6 tells you. The Bible says, which made heaven and earth. Can man do that? Man can't do that. God did that, and only God can do that. He made heaven and earth. If he made heaven and earth, then he can take care of me. If he made heaven and earth, then he can put an end to the coronavirus. If he made heaven and earth, he can take care of my family. He can take care of this church, and he can take care of the whole world. That's my hope. He made the world, and he alone keeps the truth of it. Uh, verse 7 says this, which executeth judgment for the oppressed. He executes right judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. He feeds the hungry. And then the Bible says the Lord looses the prisoners. He saves all the prisoners who will come to him. He looses the bounds of the prisoners. Verse 8, the Bible says this, the Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. Why is my hope in Christ? Because he made the world. He keeps the truth. He executes right judgment. He knows what's going on. And by the grace of God, he has permitted this thing and he can make it to pass. Only he can. He feeds the hungry. He saves the prisoners. He opens up the eyes of the blind who want to see. He raises back up those that are bowed down with problems and he loves his children. Praise God anyway midst of this issue that's going on all over the world you and I can praise God anyway you and I can praise God anyway because we have help and our help comes from God we can praise God anyway because we have hope and our hope is in God let me say this last in this worldwide epidemic coronavirus that's going all over the world and has everybody upset and everybody at wit's end, and no man knows how to deal with it. God knows how to deal with it. And our help comes from God. And we have hope in God. And then, I want to say this in verse 5. The Bible says that we can praise God anyway, because in the midst of it, we can still be happy. The Bible says in verse 5, Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. So when you recognize that man can't help you, that only God can help you, and that your hope is not in what man can do, but what God can do, then you can be happy. This is happiness. Jesus brings happiness to the man. Jesus brings happiness to your home. Jesus brings happiness to this church and to my home and into my heart. Happy is the man who has his help in the Lord, who has placed his hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not about what man can do, but what about God can do. Because of what God has done, it's proof of what he can do, and you will never be disappointed in God. Verse 9, the Bible says, The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. And it seems like a whole lot of the world tonight is upside down over this thing. But the child of God does not have to be. The child of God can praise God anyway because their help comes from God. Their hope is in God that produces a happiness that's in God. He relieveth the man. We need some relief. Only God can bring relief. Man can't bring relief. 
It can only come from God. This nation needs relief. It needs relief from the sins that it's bound in. The child of God needs relief from all the sin that surrounds them. Uh, the man of God needs relief. Happiness is in God. Verse 1, as we close, the Bible says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Verse 2 says, While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Verse 10 says, The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. So according to this passage of Scripture, we can praise God anyway in the midst of the coronavirus epidemic or whatever that's going on. The Bible says that we can have help from God, we have hope in God, and that produces a happiness in God, happiness in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you and I believe that and act upon it, uh, this evening if we're looking around at the world, then we're not going to find help. Help is not in man. Hope is not in man. And certainly happiness is not. It's in Jesus Christ the Lord. Do you believe that? This, this evening, I want to ask you this. If you're listening out there and you've never accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I'd like for you to just take a moment and think about this as you look around at all that's going on, that uh, God is in control. And God could be using this very thing to draw you to Him. God could be using this as a wake-up call to get you to realize that you need Jesus. I want to say this, God loves you, and Jesus died for you. And the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're not saved, you can repent of your sins. You can realize Jesus is the Savior, and you can ask Him to come into your heart and save you from your sins. If you're a child of God, you say, I'm saved, I, I'm on my way to heaven. I don't know what you're going through, but everybody's going through something. And the psalmist was as well. Could you look at this psalm and look at the truth of the word of God and say, the Bible's right. My help is not in man. My help is in God. And I need some help. God, I need you every hour. God, I need help. And then by the grace of God, your hope. It's not lost, child of God. Your hope is in God. God is in control. He's going to bring us through this. There's going to be a brighter day coming. And one day soon, we're going to be with Jesus in heaven because our hope is in God. You know what that produces in you, child of God? Happiness. Happiness, not in the world, not in the flesh, but in God. Our help is in God. Our hope is in God. Our happiness is in God. And I'm talking about the God of the Bible. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're listening and you're not saved, please get saved. If you are saved by the grace of God, embrace that truth and allow God to help you. Allow God to give you the hope. Allow God to bring you the happiness that's only available in Him. If we can be of any help to you, you please contact us and let us know. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time that you've allowed us to spend together with you in the Word of God. Praying, dear Lord, that if there's somebody out there that's listening, watching, that they're not saved, dear God, that they would realize that they are a sinner and that Jesus is the Savior and ask Christ to come into their heart and save them from their sins. For every child of God, allow us to realize, especially in a time like this, dear Lord, our help is not in man, our help is in Jesus. Our hope is in Jesus. And that produces a happiness that's only available through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us now, dear God, we are totally dependent upon you. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen.